best friends, but they always disagree. Taylor and Alan, I see in that. If you believe they put a man on the moon. Wow, that was, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, that was definitely your fault because I started singing before you, but I don't know <laughs> if it was. Man on a curse wheel. <laughs> I don't know if it was the Skype lag or just you having really bad timing. Uh, everything. Yeah, that makes it the most sense. So that should be the opening to this uh, episode. <laughs> that is. We've already started. <laughs> We're well nice. into this podcast, sir. We're deep in. Um, so this movie, I had never seen this movie. It's one that I always wanted to see because I I liked Andy Kaufman. Well, uh-huh. Not that I knew him, but I always thought his stuff was real funny. Yeah. I just never – it actually, for the longest time, I didn't realize that this movie was about Andy Kaufman. Huh. I didn't – because I didn't really know that much about it. I just thought it was a weird Jim Carrey role yeah. that everyone said was great, and I just never got around to it. Yeah. Well, what did you think of it? It's a good movie. It – it 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 probably immediately becomes my favorite Jim Carrey movie. Well, uh, I would at least at least my favorite Jim Carrey like Jim Carrey in the movie. Maybe not necessarily the movie as a whole, but him. Your this favorite is his character best role? Yes. Okay. Yeah. That he did the best <laughs> with. <laughs> because you said good enough. He's good a, enough. This is my. It's good enough. <laughs> this is my favorite. Jim Carrey, Jim Carrey in the movie. Yes, that, that and that's I stand by that. <laughs> also known as best character, or best role, or yeah, yes. Uh, so, Man on the Moon is Jim Carrey playing Andy Kaufman. Andy Kaufman is a comedian back in it was probably the eighties. I don't know. Exactly. Uh, yeah, it was eighties. Um, well, it was like late seventies, early eighties. Yeah. And uh, Andy Kaufman has this really weird sense of humor that he – he everything is an inside joke but almost only to him. It's like him and like a couple other people and he'll let people think that he's crazy or a jerk or mean or whatever. Or, or hurt or literally anything. Yeah. Because it's – yeah, there, there's even a mention of that in the movie – because <laughs> they're talking about doing something and he's like this is literally he's like you want to do something that is only funny to two people in the entire world and it's you and bob which was his friend yeah he's like you are the only people who think this is funny they but yeah that's and they're like yeah that's why we're doing it we find it funny <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna exactly. keep doing it and uh Bob, you, you didn't mention that this movie is actually Jim Carrey playing Andy Kaufman. I did. Playing Tony Clifton. Oh yeah, he does play Tony Clifton. Um so it he this movie this is a weird one to kind of break down because it's it's a I guess it's a biopic, but it's it's not right. like a it's not a narrative story, right? Like it I mean it's his mm-hmm. life. But it's, but it's a movie. It's a movie. It's, um, it's a film. It is. It's it's pretty good. Uh, I I think I liked it less this time around. Um, oh really? Yeah. But that was because I watched Jim and Andy right before I watched this. Oh, you watched Jim and Andy first? Yeah, because I didn't know if I was gonna have enough time. Oh okay. My. Uh, our nanny hadn't shown up the last couple of days, so I was like, not sure if, if she wasn't going to make it, I wasn't going to be able to watch it, but she showed up, yeah. so I watched it after I watched Jim and Andy. And so watching Jim and Andy made this worse for me. Really? Yeah. But we can, we can talk about that on the next episode. Um, he, Jim Carrey does a really good job, I think. I don't have oh, a. Oh, I I think so. I don't. I never knew much about Andy Kaufman before Man on the Moon. I saw this almost when it came out. I don't know. I mean, yeah, I'm not gonna act like I knew a lot about it. I I remember seeing him on, obviously, like clips and reruns of like old SNL from forever back ago, where he does his he he plays music and just kind of lip syncs. Yeah. Parts of it. 
Um, I didn't, I didn't, to be honest, I didn't know he was in the show Taxi. Yeah, that was, I kind of always, I, like, not always, I, I kind of hoped they would put Danny DeVito's character. I thought that would be a funny thing to do, but they just left him out completely. Oh, if they had someone playing Danny DeVito? Yeah, because Danny DeVito plays, uh, uh, his agent. His agent. Right. But he also in real life was in Taxi. He, I like that they brought back all these people who actually knew Andy. Yeah. And, and had worked with them. Cause like they bring back Danny DeVito, they bring back the, the wrestler, um, uh, even the people from the, the Jerry, Jerry, ta- the King Lawler, uh, Lawler. Yeah. Um, trying to think of who else, uh, ooh, why can't I think of it? Uh, his girlfriend, uh, I can't think of her name. Courtney Love? She, Courtney Love. Well, no. No, the one in real life. I can't think of her name. Lynn? Yes. Uh, Margulis. Margulis? I uh-huh. And, uh, even, even Christopher Lloyd and, uh, what's the other lady's name? Basically a bunch of people from Taxi. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just, it's it's hard. <laughs> well, let's let's talk. It is. It really is hard to break down. You're right. Well, let's kind of talk about the the moments of his life, or the I think there's clear defining parts, right? Right. So he he starts out as a comedian who's not known, and his first main character that kind of gets him off the ground is the foreigner guy. I think that's pretty Lat- much so. Lat- Latka. Or well, that, or something. that's his, yeah, that's what he's called in the show, but yeah, he didn't have a name before that. Yeah, he was just the foreigner or something. And he would come out on stage and talk in this weird accent and everyone would be real uncomfortable. Then he would do an impression of Elvis and do a really yes. good impression of Elvis. And people, but don't would, forget about the, the song about the animals. <laughs> well, that was before, yeah, so that was before the foreigners. But he he just had this weird weird sense of humor, and I again I don't know a ton about Andy Kaufman other than this this movie, but it always right. makes me wonder like, oh well, I wonder how much of that is him being kind of subversive about comedy, and yeah. how much is just him doing what he wants to do, like how much I of think it is it's both, how much of it is him just kind of being innocent. Like having an innocent soul almost, you know, like where right. singing about, uh, the, the cow says moo and the dog says bark and whatever, you know, like how much of that is just, that's what he likes. Yeah. He, his, his yeah, it's, it's hard to tell really because he never took anything seriously. Yeah. So it's, even if he were to tell you exactly why he was doing why you know why he was doing what he was doing, who knows if you could even believe it or not? It's it's such a strange sense of humor that I I think that is unparalleled by anyone. I can't think of anyone who's even remotely like that. No. Well, what do you think about cringe humor? Um, I like it. Like I, I, for the most part, I, I think it's funny. Um, I'm able to look past it being like so cringy or uncomfortable. Yeah. Like just weird. You know, I think I, I, I like that stuff. It's not like my favorite, but I can enjoy it. Yeah. I, I had a conversation with someone a while ago. We were talking about the show Friends. Yeah. And, uh, I was talking, I was saying that, you know, the, the show puts forward that, Chandler is the funny one, right? And Joey okay. is the dumb one. Right. But I find Joey so much funnier from a writing stance. Like, you have to... I don't know how to explain this. You have to know... Like, I don't think Chandler's funny. It was part of the issue. But Joey being dumb is much more interesting because it's kind of an inside joke, right? Like, it's... The yeah. the joke is, oh no, we know this isn't true, but we're gonna say it like it is true, and that's what's funny about it. Is okay. that? 
I don't yeah. know. It's kind of a stretch, but like that is a, a real basic version of what Andy Kaufman is doing to where he's, he is selling that he believes everything he's either saying or doing when it's not true. And his hope is to convince people that he's dumb. And yeah. that's what he finds funny. He, he wants people to think he's evil or wants people to think that he's dumb or wants people to think that he's stupid or whatever. Or sexist. Or and sexist. Or, yeah. It's all just, that. it's, that's what he finds joy out of is tricking people and not like tricking people. Well, I was going to say not like in a bad way, but I guess some of it was kind of, <laughs> kind of messed up, but I don't know. It's, <laughs> he's such a, a, a strange, person to try to understand yeah you you really can't even try to understand you could just take everything that he does at, at face value in the hope that it's funny to you yeah so he gets on saturday night live continues with his his uh the recording skit where he sings mighty mouse mighty mouse um <laughs> and i Man, not even all of it. Just the one line. Did you find this just, movie funny? Uh, the man in the man on the moon. Yeah. Um. Yes and no. I mean, yes, it 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 was funny, but I didn't see it as a comedy. Yeah, it, it definitely doesn't feel like a comedy. But like they no, go it's through definitely a drama. They go through all his skits, all his. Right. You know, they. I mean, he basically uh, Jim Carrey basically recreates everything. That Andy Kaufman did, but I don't yeah. find it funny watching the movie. And part of that, part of that is the tone, you know, that they set and the, the kind of tragedy of Andy Kaufman trying to entertain people, but also be original. Like, yeah. So it's harder to find funny if, like, unless that. But it, I don't know if they're even going for that. Well, no, my, what I'm saying is, they show everything that Andy Kaufman did that everyone found funny. Yeah, no, I know what you're saying. And, and yeah. I, but I think it's different because your 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 viewpoint is different. You're not you're not an audience member of Andy Kaufman. It's like you're watching from the outside uh, at his performance inside. almost. Well, yeah. Uh, well, you're. Hmm. I don't know. It's hard to explain what I was thinking, but yeah, pretty much. It's- well, it's, it becomes. It's not funny. Well, there's there's two different things. One, it could it might just not be funny. Now, you know what I mean. Like if that happened, if Andy Kaufman was alive now, he did all the same stuff now. Who knows that if it would work? Yeah, that, I I have to kind of believe probably not. Yeah, and it's hard because. Obviously, a lot of it is – it's the same idea of like um, uh, Citizen Kane is supposed to be this great movie and revolutionized filmmaking and all this stuff. But now you watch right. it and it's like, oh, no, none of this feels new or original, but that's because yeah. everyone copied it, right? And so now you look at what Andy Kaufman did, it doesn't feel new or original because a lot of other people have copied it. And so yeah. – he wouldn't be funny now because he was funny then, but if he was new now, maybe he would be fun- like it's just a it's a difficult thing to know or understand, but like watching his skits, if he weren't watching them in the movie, I don't think he would find them all that funny. But when you watch the movie with everything, all the backstory, everything you know that's going on, they're definitely not funny because you see everything that goes into the sausage. You know what I mean? Like it's right. Yeah. And, uh, a lot of his stuff was so aggressive and so angry that it's not like a fun thing to be a part of. I think if Andy Kaufman were still alive today, he would have taken Jim Carrey's life. He would have murdered Jim Carrey. (laughs) No, he would be Jim Carrey. Oh, gotcha. Well, that's a weird way to say it. I know. As soon as I said it, I was like, that's not what I meant. Uh, yeah, maybe. Kind of like uh, Kevin James uh, took the life, <laughs> took the role of uh, Chris Farley. Um, so, but yeah, so Andy Kaufman does that on Saturday Night Live. 
gets onto taxi, gets a job on taxi, doesn't want to do yeah. it, but sees it as an opportunity to make Tony Clifton a thing. Like that, that's yeah, what the he movie. He doesn't like sitcoms. Yeah, which I don't blame him. Sitcoms are pretty bad. Yeah. Um, have you ever seen the show Taxi? Uh, I think so. A long time ago when I was younger. And they, I have never seen it. It would come on like Nick at Night or whatever. Yeah. Do um, you remember him at all? No. No, I don't even remember the show hardly at all. Yeah, I don't either. But, uh. Well, because I never saw it, so. <laughs> um. But he gets on taxi, creates Tony Clifton. Tony, now, Tony Clifton is a, an alternate, is another character that, uh, he was playing that Andy Kaufman would play, who's just this really gruff, aggressive, racist, brash, dude. Bra- yeah, just this terrible, terrible person who pretended he to be. He reminds me of the, uh, Tom Cruise's character from Tropic Thunder. Yeah, but with less class. Oh, yeah. And, uh, so he goes, he pretends to be a lounge singer, starts singing, and then just starts cursing everyone out and yelling at people and stuff. And it's kind of a, uh, an outlet for Andy Kaufman, the, the Mm -hmm. nice Andy Kaufman. Like it's a, his release almost. Yeah. The, the innocent, sweet Andy Kaufman turns into Tony Clifton to like explode all that frustration. Um, I, what do you think about Tony Clifton? Uh, in what way? Like, do you think he was funny? No. No, I've no, never. I, I liked it. I've never really enjoyed Tony Clifton in real life or in this movie. Huh. I, I don't like but, the, uh, yeah. I don't like the, that. I, the one joke that was funny was, uh, when they're like, uh, sorry everyone, we're gonna need you to put out your cigars and cigarettes, Tony Clifton. He, uh, his lungs are very sensitive and can't be around all your smoke. And people are like yeah. complaining. It's like, oh, I paid 10 bucks for that cigar. And they're like, oh, sorry, sorry. And then he comes out smoking a cigarette. Like, <laughs> yeah. that was a funny joke. But, uh, right. when he starts like yelling at people and getting all aggressive and like just whiny, you know, like that's the, mm-hmm. probably the best way to describe Tony Clifton. It's like, ah, oh, this isn't fun. This is, he's just throwing a tantrum. Like, that's not enjoyable to right. watch. I did like the scene where he's getting fired from Taxi. Yeah. They they really had that guy convinced that maybe he is a different person. I I don't know if that if that's what it was was going on. If he thought it was a different person or not. I think I he, think at first he did at least. I think he was but just confused. I, honestly, he might have just been going along with it yeah, just I, to do it. I think that's more of what it was. The director was just like because cause Andy Kaufman was like, well, just let him down easy. And the director's like, oh, this is – my life is going to be more simple than I thought. Yeah. And then he goes and fires him and Tony Clifton freaks out and starts screaming at him and all that. And uh, the director's like, well, I thought I was talking to Andy or whatever. And uh, I don't know. It's I, – I don't enjoy Tony Clifton, but it, I understand why people might. I would say to sum up Andy Kaufman – he seems like someone who, let's say that we were, you know, older at the time that he was, you know, we were more around, we were this age when he was in his prime. Yeah. Like, he seems like someone that I think would, like, be funny to watch, but be horrible to, like, ever be around in real life yeah. or work with. Yeah. Like, horrible to work with. Just because he's so off the wall. And he makes things so you can never tell if he's joking or not. You can never tell. You you really have no idea what to expect. Yeah. Um, but from so from Taxi, he starts wrestling women, which <laughs> just the idea, like how he came up with the idea, and just how that all came <laughs> to be is so weird. It's it's very weird. But his and his goal was to be hated, like that's what yep. he was trying to do. Like he just wanted everyone to hate him, everyone to be angry with him. So he starts wrestling women. 
starts yelling at him and like just being really chauvinistic and all this different stuff. Uh, and people get upset about it. People do not think it's funny. People don't like it. And, uh, he works together with Jerry the King Lawler and they have this big feud going on and it, uh, it keeps escalating, escalating. And every time, uh, Andy Kaufman is like, you know what? I need to apologize for this. Like, give me an opportunity. So he goes on like David Letterman show and then they escalate it more. And every time right, he, he straight attacks him. Yeah. Every time they, that was funny. It, it seems like it's going to get better. He just uses that as an opportunity to escalate it further. Cause he has to always throw in there something about suing or I, I'm going to sue you or I could have sued you, but I didn't this and that. He ugh. did you, okay. Before you saw the man in the moon, oh, did you even know who Jerry Lawler was? Yeah. I grew up. So, did you know about him and and Andy together? No. So, watching the movie, did you know that they were working together? Not until it was revealed. Yeah, I was. Yeah, me either. That kind of caught me off guard a little yeah. bit. I, I I thought that was cool though. Um, I I watching Jim and Andy, I had to wonder. Like, I would say out of anyone. Lawler had the biggest role in both movies, right? Yeah. Well, so originally I think we intended to do an episode on Jim and Andy, but I think it might make the most sense just to talk about them together at this point. Oh, I kind of thought that's what we were going to do. Oh, yeah. I was going to make two episodes, but I don't think, I don't think there's enough for, to do that. Um, I was really, so Jim and Andy, I really did not enjoy. It, uh, made me, it made me like Man on the Moon less. I really enjoyed Man on the Moon. I thought it was great. But right. seeing Jim Carrey and how deep, how crazy he became for it was just kind of upsetting to me. Um, and the biggest. But that's why he was so good in Man on the Moon. The biggest, well, so the biggest thing against that, I think, is his interaction with Jerry Lawler. Where uh-huh. Jerry's like, Jim, me and Andy were friends. You are not treating me like you are not, you are not acting like Andy Kaufman is. You're acting yeah. like the public persona. And like seeing that was just like, oh yeah, he, he is, he's not, he's not Andy Kaufman. He is Andy Kaufman's character. Do you know what I mean? Like right. it's not, I don't know. It's just, I don't know how to explain it. It just like, no, I know what you're saying. It did not feel like he, it was such a great thing anymore because it didn't seem like he did it right. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, but at the same time, on the opposite end of that, yeah. you had all of the interactions that he had with Andy's family. And I thought that was kind of cool that I hated it was weird. It was, but, it was upsetting because this family lost their brother, their son, all this stuff. And here's Jim Carrey who wants to be Andy Kaufman, that he's willing to talk to Andy Kaufman's daughter who was given away. Like it was, it made me feel kind of sick just thinking about that. Like he thinks it's, he took it as like this great, moment for him and for her of like, well, she kind of had a chance to talk to her dad and, you know, work through this stuff. And it's like, no, she had a chance to talk to a crazy person. Well, yeah, that, that part specifically I agree with. And I would agree that it is weird because it did feel weird at first. Had it not been for that, like, it felt like the family was very receptive to the whole idea of treating him like he was Andy. Yeah. So I, I don't know. It's, it, 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 it's weird, but I, it's, it's not something that I, I took issue with. Yeah. I mean, if that's, if, if that's, you know, something that can bring that family any kind of happiness, cause maybe it feels like the real Andy or whatever, then I'm all for it. I, I don't, I think at most it would bring, 
kind of a like it's like oh he's paying respect to Andy. Do you know what I mean? Like it's right. I think Jim the at least from the documentary the way it seemed from Jim Carrey's point of view was he was giving them another chance to experience Andy. And I think they took right. it more, at least based on just being a person, <laughs> uh, not so much what the, the movie said. Um, but I would assume they would take it more like, wow, look how great a job he's doing. He, he seems like Andy, like this is very respectful towards right. him. And it, like, I don't know, it just is not, it's not the same thing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I don't know. That's how I kind of took it, I guess. I, like I was saying, I, I have to wonder, like, for Lawler, like, how it felt pretty much living all of those memories over again, you know, doing it with Andy and then doing it with Jim. Why? Well, I, I would like, imagine it was upsetting. Like, because there was the one scene in the documentary where Jim Carrey, like, slams into the back of him and knocks him off the ring and, like, he almost hurts himself. And he's like, he just shoved me down. Like... This is not even stuff that wrestlers do to each other. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like they, they treat each other with more respect than that. And it was just that it was the, the Jerry and Jim stuff really was upsetting to me for some reason. Just the, the, <clears throat> the way Jim Carrey was willing to treat this guy so poorly in the name of Andy Kaufman when that's not even something Andy Kaufman would do. Yeah, that's true because I really, not that we really get to see like a whole lot of it, but I did enjoy at least the perceived relationship between Andy and Jerry because they're so completely different people. Yeah. Andy's like this small, uh, non athletic, you know, comedian. And then you got Jerry's this big bruising wrestler guy. I, that sounded. <laughs> Like someone who doesn't know what sports is, but, <laughs> and then, the, but they had like a friendship and that they worked together. Well, yeah. Know, Cause he, it was very, fun. it was very believable that they hated each other in the movie. And then right, it turned out that they didn't. And you're like, Oh wow. That was, that was great. You know, like that's a, that's cool. Uh, but then you find out that, oh, maybe they actually hated each other in real life, or Jerry probably hated Jim Carrey in real life. And, oh, for sure. <laughs> and it was just kind of upsetting. Um, but I feel like everyone, like, I don't know, the, the idea of getting so deep into a character that when people are talking to him on screen and they're like, oh, Jim, uh, tomorrow you need to be here, you need to do this. And he's like, who? Who? And like, oh, sorry, Andy. Yeah. He's like, yeah, yeah, I'll let Jim know. And it's just like, I, uh, it's just so obnoxious, you know? Like, it's, it's hard for you to understand because you're not a good actor. That's you know? true. That's, you've never had to do this. Yeah. Trust me, it's difficult. I've never had to lose myself in a character before. Um, no, I, but, but I mean, if that's, if that's what someone like Jim Carrey needs to put out his best Andy, then do it. Um, I mean, there's I no know. point in doing a movie and then, like, only taking half measures. If you're going to do it, you got to do whatever it takes. I understand. And if that's, if that's what it takes, I, yeah, obviously you don't want to get to the point where you're upsetting people like Jerry just because you, I don't know if you thought that that's things that Andy would do or not. I don't know. That, you're right though. That was hard to watch. Yeah. It's just, it, cause it like, almost felt, think about it, if, think, yeah. think about if, Andy Kaufman was watching that. You know what I mean? Like the, yeah. just someone pretending to be you, but doing things that you wouldn't do, but doing it with the idea of like, Oh no, it's okay because I'm being him. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you would think like if that- someone, if someone was pretending to be me for a movie 
and they treated you with dignity and respect, I would roll over in my grave and die a second time. And I'd be like, look, this is not how things were, <laughs> and you're insulting Alan by treating me like this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, what I was going to say is you, you would think someone like, like Jim Carrey, if you're going to deep dive that much into the role, you would talk to all these people that Andy had relationships and like try to find out the true nature of their relationship, not just the on-screen relationship, yeah. but like, yeah, this is how we acted in the wrestling ring, you know, in the match or on David Letterman or in the public, but like behind the scenes when there was no one around, like he was just a normal guy and we were friends or yeah. whatever. Like, and, he, and if he you may really not... want to be Andy, you would treat me like that when we're not filming. Yeah. He may not have been also, I don't know. Maybe that, maybe Jim Carrey was exactly how Andy Kaufman was, but he also right. wasn't Andy Kaufman. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Yeah. I, 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 maybe it, like, I know Daniel Day Lewis loses himself in a character and he's considered to be one of the greatest actors. Heath Ledger lost himself in the Joker and that was one of the greatest performances. Like, you have these guys who are willing to go so deep that they kind of lose themselves in the character. Mm -hmm. It's not a documentary I want to watch. Like, it's so, it just feels so pompous and so, like, uh, self congratulatory, you know, like, look how cool, like even, oh, yeah. even in the interview, he was con talking about Jim and talking about Andy and talking about Tony Clifton. Like there are three yeah. distinct different people, three different people. And, and he is not one of those three. Yeah. And it's like, okay, I get that you're, you're playing a role and that you want to stay in character. That's one thing, but to not be able to say like, when I was acting like this person or, you know what I mean? Like to, to recognize like, no, no, that was still me just being a character. Like it, it, to me, it felt like Jim Carrey is maybe not under the impression of this, but is trying to put forward this idea that he is channeling Andy Kaufman's spirit. And that's right. It's insane to me. That is insane. True. Um, but all that being said, it is a really interesting and fascinating documentary. The movie is great, The Man on the Moon, and the Jim and Andy is fascinating. It's just not enjoyable. Do you know what I mean? Like the it's like so yeah. it's so frustrating to watch. Not because it's, oh, it's made very frustrating. Yeah, not because it's made poorly, but because Jim Carrey is so frustrating. Intentionally. Like that's the point. Like that's the like it'd be like saying Black Mirror is bad because I feel emotionally exhausted after every episode. It's that what they were trying to show is like, look how frustrating Jim Carrey was. And so yeah. they did that really well, <laughs> but it's also, you're watching a frustrating person for an hour and a half. Yeah. It's it. it yeah. Now I, I liked it. Go ahead. Did you, have you looked into any more of, Andy Kaufman's story or Tony Clifton or any of that since watching this? Um, no. So there's like a lot of rumors that Andy Kaufman never died. And, oh, okay. And that, uh, he was, I, I think it was 20 years or 25 years. He was going to come out and reveal that he never died. Well, let's see. That would be next year then. Yeah. I think, let me see. Let me pull that up. Would that surprise you? Yeah, very much so. You think you think that's too too far fetched? Yeah, I don't. I don't think it's possible. Yeah, twenty five years is a long time to wait for a joke to pay off. <laughs> uh, I can't find anything, um, but I'll have, to, I'll have to look at that. Yeah, it, there's there's a lot of conspiracy theories and a lot of stuff that makes it. They try to make it sound like Andy Kaufman is still alive, but there's. I think it's crazy. I don't think there's any potential that he's still alive. But maybe. No, 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 no. Maybe he is, but they're definitely not. Um, but, uh, I don't know. It's, uh, it's interesting for sure. It's Andy a Kaufman is Jim Carrey. You think so? And Jim Carrey was just playing himself in his own movie. Because I think they even said that they said Andy came back just to make his own movie on his own terms. 
and make it how he wanted to make it. Yeah. The um what do you think about Jim Carrey? Um the same roughly that I feel or I at least I guess I used to feel about Adam Sandler. Yeah. I I like him in his like I don't want to say only his serious roles, but his over the top stuff, I it's I find it so stupid. Yeah. Like I- I just watched like, uh, like uh, what's it? Freaking Ace Ventura. That's awful. Yeah, I just watched comedians in the car. Comedians in a car getting coffee with Jim yeah. Carrey. And right. I, how was that one? I just felt bad for him because for Jim Carrey. Yeah, because he he was constantly performing to the camera. Every right. like he it just seemed so exhausting. To be him, and maybe it's just because of my personality is not that at all. But he, yeah, he, it just seems so sad and empty. Of like, I, I got to do something goofy here. I got to do something goofy here. Like just going from like bit to bit to bit to bit, and it just was like, oh yeah, like, man, like Robin Williams. Yeah, like and like, not to try to prove my point of it being sad and empty, but you look how sad and empty Robin Williams was that he was willing to kill himself and just was so depressed, you know, like it just Mm -hmm. that, I don't know if it was in light of Robin Williams that made me feel worse for Jim Carrey and that or what, but it, something about it just felt so depressing to me. Yeah, I could see that. Um, the way I feel about, I mean, but he's got some really good movies. Like well, Truman Show is a fantastic movie. Truman and Show, what's uh, it, Eternal Sunshine, Man on the Moon, but these are all broken people movies. Yeah, Truman Show less than, but it's still, still, it's very much like deeper issues coming through. Yeah, um, I'm trying to think of where that wouldn't be the case. Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> Is that a good movie, though? Um, well, I, I how what uh, what is good? Well, like, is it? It does what it wants. I think it achieves what it set out to do. Yeah. So, if you measured good by that standard, then yes. That doesn't necessarily mean it's for everyone or for anyone. Yeah. But it is what it is. It's not like it tried something and failed. Yeah. Um, that's, that, so I don't know. I mean, I liked it, but that's all I got for that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm looking at his movies right now. The number 23 was a weird movie. Yeah, I didn't see that. I saw an interview with him about it before, and he seemed like a crazy person. Not something. Yeah. Oh, he was definitely crazy in that movie. Uh, he was in the Lemony Snicket. He was in the Grinch. I'm trying to think of movies without looking. Um, Cable Guy. Cable Guy was interesting. That's a decent. The one. Mask. The Mask is not very good. Nah. Let's see. Uh, I've never seen Cable Guy. You've never seen Cable Guy? Uh uh-uh. oh. that's crazy. That's decent. Um but yeah, so Jim and Andy, Man on the Moon. Man on the Moon is really good. I think it's really well done. It's super interesting. Uh watching it again for the second time I liked it less, but it's still really good. Still would recommend yeah. watching it. Um Jim and Andy is I don't know, I I have a hard time recommending it because it, I've just kind of found it upsetting. What do you, what's your opinion? Um, I liked it. I mean, it, uh, it's hard to describe other than I, I, I didn't have enough issues with it to not recommend it. Yeah. Yeah, but it's not a must see. No, like if you are really into Man on the Moon, I think you'll find it fascinating. Like I right, I yeah. found it like I was I was really into it. It's just not enjoyable. I, I don't know. 
I feel like there needs, there's another way to describe that, but I don't know what it is. Um, indescribable. Indescribable. But it's, it's not bad. It's just, yeah. it's just really frustrating. Yeah. Yeah, it, it is. Well, anything else about, uh, these two movies? Um, nope. That's all I got. All right. Well, if you like our show, you can help us out over on Patreon. Uh, we are running a competition, a bet that whoever has the least amount of votes at the end of the month is going to have to pay a punishment. Um, boo. <laughs> at the time of recording this so far, I've had to have my legs wax and Taylor's had to eat a Carolina Reaper. Uh, you can find Woo. those on YouTube and as well as whatever has happened since then. There should be, I think, two more by the time this comes Ugh. out. That sounds like a nightmare. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can also follow us on uh, Twitter at I Seen That Pod, like us on Facebook, and we will be back soon. Yes, uh, we will. <laughs>